Let's take a look at the past paper questions then. A software company carries out a design review as part of its quality control process. Identify three tasks that will be carried out during a design review. So for three marks, we need three clear points here. So you may check the correspondence between the actual design and its specification, or the user requirements, uh, or the objectives or the safety issues. Now this involves really making sure that the design and the specification match. You may also confirm that the most appropriate techniques have been used so that they're the most efficient or they are the most appropriate for the methodologies that are being implemented. Confirm that the human computer interface is appropriate for the application. So uh, is it a GUI? Is the GUI easy to use? Is it too technical? We look at things like that. And all those things together perform a positive design review. A 10 marker then, and this of course would have been marked according to the marking bands that we've seen before. Compare the waterfall and agile approaches to systems analysis and discuss suitable programming paradigms from each approach. Now, programming paradigms, of course, comes from a different subunit within unit three. And therefore, this is a sort of a combination question. But let's have a look at how they can be applied to our methods. Once again, it's indicative content. So this is stuff that you could have added they, they will take sensible and correct answers as well. So one of the first things about the waterfall approach is that it's sequential design in which lots of developers draft up all the requirements for a system before we start. By having all the requirements beforehand, everyone knows exactly what's needed. And that's important, isn't it? And that's really useful, isn't it? Knowing exactly what we need to do before we start building. Clients know what to expect, including the timeframes, the size, the cost, and they know exactly what their products do in advance of the development starting because everything has already been planned out. We can more straightforwardly allocate the time and the efforts and the costs. If employees leave or join the development team, the strong documentation allows bringing people up to speed very quickly. And that we've talked about that before. It's the idea that we've got this big plan, so when a new person starts, we just point them to the bit of the plan that they're working on. Because the process is sequential, once a stage of development has been completed, you can't go back to a previous one to make changes. Technically true, but if you did have to go back due to a major problem, you'd have to work your way through all the stages before you could get back to where you were. You can't just chop and change. If the initial requirements of the project are faulted in any way, the project is almost guaranteed to fail. And in fact, most of the software failures you will hear about in the press tend to be based on the waterfall model. The product only tested once when it's completed, and if bugs are made early on, a large amount of code will be affected. Okay, this is the rough rule of thumb, but the reality is it would be tested. The units themselves would be tested by the programmers in a process called unit testing. However, the product will only be tested as a whole when it's completed. And therefore, you could notice issues that affect massive amounts of code right at the end, which is problematic to say the least. If the client's needs change, the project will take longer because we can't just add an extra bit. We have to go all the way back to analysis and work our way back through those stages again. How about the agile approach then? How is that different? It's an incremental approach in which developers start off with a simple idea and work on small modules. It can be hard to employ new people when we get going because we have less of a clearly defined process. We don't really know the big picture just yet. And so therefore it's difficult to sit somebody down and say, off you go. The third point here, it can be difficult to predict when the project will be completed or how much it ultimately cost. We don't have a good idea up front about the entire design or development process. We have a, a rough idea, but not the same level of detail you get in Waterfall. And as such, it's a bit vaguer of timescales and costings. The positives, though, are that changes can be made after the initial planning phase. Clients can make changes as we go, and the program can be rewritten as we go. That iterative prototyping idea works wonders here. Testing's done as it's been developed. We test everything as it's going because it's small and easily testable. So we find the bugs early and we stamp those out. And a smaller team works better with Agile because you're removing all the upper layers of project managers required to coordinate the waterfall approach. So there does tend to be a closer relationship between the customer and the developer as well because we need that communication. We're more often coming to the customer and saying, here's where we are, what do you think? How can we improve it? What's the next steps? 
if the end goal is not clearly defined, and that could happen, then agile development is the most suitable approach because it gives us the opportunity to change and update as we go. Finally, sprints of work are done and the priorities of the project are discussed, evaluated and tested. Then a simple product is released to the consumer and they're able to use it and provide feedback. So that's the iterative prototyping process that we discussed earlier. It's being able to go, well, we've just done a sprint. We've spent a couple of days working on code. Here's a working version, a simple or a partially working version of what you talked about. Have a play with it, see what you think and give us some feedback. We then use that feedback to go into another sprint and add and develop those changes and then give it back to the customer again. And it's that iterative looping prototype methodology that works to improve the quality of the software. Okay, what about paradigms then? Because this is content from a different subunit that we're overlapping here. Well, procedural languages are suitable for both. Well, yeah, of course they would be. Uh, scripting language is suitable for both. Non-procedural language would be suitable for waterfall, but might not work as well with Agile. Now, why is that? Non-procedural language work by us saying what we want the end result to be and the system developing its rules and its methods itself. In Agile, we may not know what that end result needs to be, so we may have difficulty in defining that. Object-orientated language is suitable for both. Of course, they would be. Uh, visual languages are more suitable for Agile? Well, I suppose so. Uh, I, I, I struggle to see why anybody would use a visual language when they're working professionally, but that might be the case. Fourth generation languages are suitable for both. Yes, of course they'd be. So you can see there that the way in which that we answer that question is by just throwing a bunch of different types of paradigms at the wall and explaining which are good and which are not. The only one that really is something to get your teeth into is that non-procedural because the non-procedural is the only one that you can't really use with agile 